Hello and welcome to our Sabbath School panel as we continue studying the Gospel according to Paul, Galatians. This week we will be studying Lesson 4, Growing in Harmony. Before we begin, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you for this day and thank you for all your blessings that you've given us and um, bless us now and guide us as we study the lesson and that we may be able to reach the people watching and that they may benefit from this as well and forgive us our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Today on the panel, we have Brother Johnson, Brother Levu, and myself, Paloma. Before we begin the main lesson of the day, we are going to have a brief review of last week's lesson. If you would like to study along with us, you can find a digital copy by visiting sdarm.org publications. You can also find it on our mobile app through the Apple Store or Google Play Store by simply searching for SDARM. Brother Johnson will now lead us out in a short review of last week's lesson, Onward to Antioch. Brother Johnson. Thank you. Onward to Antioch. We see that uh, Apostle Paul uh, has been given a very important uh, work and uh, from one who was traveling from one place to another persecuting the early Christians to someone who goes as a teacher to sp spread God's word even more effectively. In Acts chapter 22 verse 21 it says, And the Lord said unto me, Depart, for I will send thee far hence unto the Gentiles. So we see that uh, in the beginning, the disciples were very uh, comfortable going and teaching and talking among the Jews. But now with Saul, who was uh, persecuting everyone after the conversion, a new group of people is being not targeted, but reached out, mm -hmm. the Gentiles. Because there was always a mentality of exclusiveness, God's chosen uh, people. In Testimonies for the Church, uh, volume 6, page 413, it says, How many act as if they realize their peril of sinners? How many take those whom they know to be in peril, presenting them to God in prayer and supplicating Him to save them? So if we really believe and live our life as though the end is nearing, and we take a moment to think, how many people are really being saved? Yeah. How many people will not die the eternal death, but will be able to be among God's chosen people? It will be really hard for us to sleep. Yeah. And uh, even for our own self, like when we, when we try to re-examine our own heart and see, am I really ready? It will be very yeah. hard for us to even sleep, isn't it? So. Uh, not to uh, bring this as uh, something to scare us, but it's, we have to realize that, okay, if we trust in the Lord completely and allow Him to guide us, it's easy. It's, yeah. We don't have to worry about what's going to happen. So let us see um, what happens with Apostle Paul. We see that he was not in just one place. He had to, when he went to a place, and then he had to move from that place to another. And what brings... Uh, yeah, what is brought to my mind is uh, the same as what happened with Jesus. He would go with his disciples to teach and preach there. And he had to suddenly leave that place and go to another place. Because all these Jews that were there, they were again planned to persecute him. And they were always trying to bring difficulty. And rather than cause even more commotion, if Jesus wanted, he could have eliminated those problems if he wanted immediately. But what was the uh, way he actually found? He would just move from that place to another place and continue to work. And in the new place, at least there was no persecution immediately. So we see here also with uh, Paul that uh, the Jews were not able to argue with what the things that he had presented. And the only thing that came to their mind was the final resort is to kill him off. And we see that uh, God had warned uh, uh, warned uh, Saul about uh, what was going to happen and his friends came up with a plan to of, uh, for him to escape riding on a basket to go to get out of the city and it, it was at night time and for Paul who was a very straightforward and very 
<laughs> very strong character man it was a humiliating thing for for him to just try to escape in the darkness so even when we see that okay when is when we are being persecuted in one place the prudent thing would be to go to another place like even later on we would see how when when uh, uh, Saul was not uh, welcome he just dusted his dress and his shoes and then he just went to another place okay if you don't want the gospel no problem i'll go to somewhere where they are willing to um, to receive it so we see that he moved from place to place because of persecution and uh, also we see that uh, he spent there uh, three years and after three years he went to meet peter and there he spent some time like he was there for 15 days yeah and we see uh, as we uh, kind of discussed a lot about uh, his uh, reception it says an odd reception i would think that uh, for someone to have been your enemy and now to be a friend it should be a very joyous occasion mm -hmm. something to uh, for us to be looking forward to but what was the situation here we see that Paul had been longing to go and meet the uh, apostles and uh, other believers and the reception was not as warm as he expected. It was sort of cold. Paloma, what do you think uh, was the reception like? Uh, they didn't trust him, I guess, and they were pretty hesitant because of his past in persecuting the Jews and uh, even though they had heard about how he was converted, they weren't sure if it was actually true or if it was actually a conversion. Maybe mm -hmm. he was tricking them. Yes. And so that caused them to be very uh, wary of him. Yes. So they did have a reason why, why they could not fully trust him. But we see that there was a person there, Barnabas, who came and, as yeah. they say, break the ice. Okay. Yeah. And not just break the ice, he sort of vouched for him. He took his hand and mm -hmm. introduced them and also talk about, uh, mentioned about how Jesus himself uh, came and talked to uh, Saul and he had his conversion experience. And then once they knew everything, they were more than happy and glad yeah. to really receive him. Yeah, it's interesting, Brother Johnson and uh, uh, the rest of the people that are listening to us or are spending time with us online. It's uh, in this situation, you, ha you are dealing with two centers that commands our behavior. Number one, it's the emotional behavior. And uh, on the other side, you have the dictates of your conscience, the whisper of the Holy Spirit. In one way, uh, the dark forces will speculate their fear that is based on reality of the past. Mm -hmm. On the other side, the, the Holy Spirit uh, awaken their conscience and says, hey, this is, go ahead, this is from me, don't be afraid. So they were struggling in between uh, to give in the emotional factor to, to possess them or just to, uh, to reject uh, the, the, the fear factor that, that subdues the frontal lobe and, and say, no, I preserve the serenity of my mind and I believe uh, the, the voice of the Holy Spirit sent by the Lord Jesus Christ and I'm going to do exactly uh, what he tells me or what my conscience dictates to do against or in spite my fears. It's not easy for us to do that. And, and that's a, this, this is an example, mm -hmm. one of many in the scripture. Yes, and I like how it uh, mentions here about um, from, like you can say, from black to white or from mm -hmm. bad to good. It says uh, here, that the apostles no longer hesitated. They could not withstand God. Peter and James, who were at that time, were the only apostles in Jerusalem, gave the right hand of fellowship to the once fierce persecutor of their faith. And he was now as much beloved and respected as he had formerly been feared and avoided. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. someone who you were terrified to even know that mm -hmm. he's coming to mm -hmm. someone that you, always, you yeah. look forward to. Yeah. So uh, this is how our nature should be not, not someone that people want to avoid yeah. but someone who want to really listen to and even jesus christ the children wanted to go and sit yeah. on his lap yeah. and listen yeah. to him yeah. versus with the uh, others with the uh, with the priests and also even the disciples they said don't don't disturb him he's uh, yeah. busy 
but that was their mentality but jesus wanted to receive anyone yes brother yeah i uh, it's uh, it's just uh, i think that was uncomfortable for uh, for paul too to see that he is avoided uh, honestly i mean he he was an intelligent man and sure. he could sense the the atmosphere the ambience immediately and he felt bad uh, because in spite of his conversion in spite of the presence of the holy spirit these people they still doubt my personal experience with the lord is is very painful mm -hmm. when when uh, a brother puts under the doubt uh, your personal experience with the lord jesus christ because <coughs> excuse me um if you remember how he spent the three years in Arabia. Mm -hmm. It was a time of reflection Correct. and self-examination. So he wanted to make sure that all the things that he had done in the past was forgiven. Yeah. And he, everything was right in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. And once he was sure that, okay, everything is right, he was so happy to go and meet these believers, yeah. okay, to, to embrace them and saying that I was wrong and uh, yeah. okay, I, now I am one among you. Yeah. And to be so happy to do that and then to see that people are avoiding, it's going to be a really yes. difficult thing. Yes, yes. And also we see that uh, uh, as much as uh, uh, zeal that Saul had, there were other teachers also in uh, among the Jews that had that kind of a zeal. Yeah. And it also mentions how Paul was very sure that these teachers, if once they listen to him about his experience and about the love of Jesus Christ in the in the scripture, they will be sure to embrace it. Mm -hmm. But he was really disappointed. And we see that um, he, in his mind, he thought that they were very sincere in their belief. Yeah. But now he realized that, okay, it wasn't real uh, sincere belief. It was just that they have this complete biased view and uh, other else. other interests yes than the so basically he thought that um he everyone there including the people that he used to persecute they would all receive him well mm -hmm. and that they'd understand what he was saying or what he was teaching that they'd accept it but yeah. that's not that wasn't the case yes and it it goes up to the point where it says he would willingly have yielded up his life if by that means he might bring some to a knowledge of the truth. Same as Stephen. Yeah. The stoning of Stephen. Yes, God did not save his life at that time, but that martyrdom actually converted a lot of people around. Yeah. So sometimes God allows Thanks. people to be saved. Sometimes God allows people to rest in, in, in him. But we don't know the, what is the uh, actual... Uh, uh, reason yeah but if we are trusting in the Lord Stephen didn't cry no. out of pain no, no 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 he was ready he knew and then even at that time at least to try and uh, wake up the mind he was crying out like you guys are not persecuting me you're working against the, the, the Lord, yeah. Lord and he was trying to preach even at that time yeah I, I think I think personally that this is a very very controversial lesson in the uh, in the biblical history the fact uh, that you have Daniel that has been saved from the lion's pit and by saving Daniel, God will convert many in the Middle Persian mm -hmm. Empire. On the opposite side, you have John the Baptist, which was not saved from the lion pit, spiritually yeah. speaking, yeah because of the millions of martyrs that will follow in the first century will look back to john the baptist and get encouraged yeah. so divine wisdom god our heavenly father has has an immense infinite way of per perceiving things and and approaching things i mean there is no way that god will ever lose a, a, a conflict mm -hmm. with the forces of evil he's always in a win-win situation our Heavenly Father, it's just amazing. And that's why we, we are, are, are overwhelmed. We are melt. Our heart melts under the impression of, of His love. And his, uh, the way that He treats us is just, it's just simply we love Him because He impressed us to, with, with His character mm -hmm. in a sense. Because He first loved us. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's, that's all uh, there is to it. So moving on, as it says, time to move. 
again now um, Saul has to move and even though um, he was not fully convinced that he has to move mm -hmm. he was uh, uh, he was told to get, get out meaning it says here make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem mm -hmm. meaning, uh, don't spend so much time you need to go and then he still thought that okay if he were to talk about his experience on they would there would be some kind of a mellowing down of their characteristic but again the second time the warning was given yeah. depart for i will send thee far hence unto the gentiles so mm -hmm. he was not to just escape and just hide mm -hmm. he was given a commission to go and preach yeah. to the gentiles and we see that okay at this time he he did uh, obey the uh, the call immediately because he didn't have time to talk to anyone else but just the uh, just James there yeah and he had to just take off so we say we have to uh, be sure that we have to also recognize the situation um, if Saul would have disobeyed probably his life could have ended right there under okay? the because threat yes god would still protect him absolutely uh, like uh, we, we don't know we cannot just uh, assume or imagine what could happen okay but god can do miracles okay even in the case of jesus okay when everyone are coming to there to kill jesus like how did he escape like did they get become blind or what yeah so god has ways of doing it but, but, but I, I do really believe that uh uh, we spare our life by obeying the word. Exactly. Because uh, you have two examples, Lot and his wife. They both have received or were granted the, the chance of sparing their lives. Uh, Lot took advantage. The wife was still reluctant to follow the word of the Lord. I, I, and I don't mean men, women, yeah, yeah. we men do the same mistakes. It's, it doesn't have anything to do with the, with the gender. Uh, but it's it's a matter of choice mm -hmm. if we if we don't obey the word and 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 in fact uh, if our brothers and sisters that are online can verify us uh, there is a statement I'm not quite sure in the spirit of prophecy in the great controversy or testimonies where uh, the 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 prophet of the modern times Ellen G. White says that when um, at the time of uh, persecution comes for the people of God uh, she says she is very specific uh, the the people of God in the time when the laws uh, civil laws were withdrawn uh, our protection they have to obey to every command of the angels otherwise their life will be in, in, in danger so I sincerely even though it's a hypothetical concept that uh, was brought on the table for discussion uh, if what would have happened if Apostle Paul would not have obeyed the word get out uh, yes definitely God would have intervened yeah. it's possible but in the same time it's an alternative that by forfeiting his uh, a relationship with the Lord by disobeying the word, uh, being reluctant to obey, would have put himself in jeopardy. Yes. Now we have the case of David, where David obeyed or disobeyed. Like for instance, he started to play uh, um, to play uh, 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 crazy, you know, mm -hmm. insane, like a madman, yeah. like mad and and go to the the camp of the enemies. And it's not only uh, Israelites uh, Israelites enemies, but were yes. the enemies of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And the spirit of prophecy says that the Lord uh, did not did not um, go I mean went strictly against him he tolerated him he tried to learn him to teach him lessons of faith but you see there is a difference between David who was not a theologian and Apostle Paul who was really deeply directly acquainted with uh, with uh, with his personal mission in behalf of the Lord Jesus Christ so high knowledge high responsibility yes. yeah and we are talking about this uh, the beginning of the infant church but in our church today how are we to do we should not just depend on uh, putting all the responsibility only on the ministers or the preacher uh, pastors and yeah. so on but it says that uh, it is also his purpose that uh, that church members living in these cities shall use their god-given talents in working for souls yeah. so if every one of us individually go and work as it is commanded for sure there would be a huge harvest yeah so we don't have to worry about oh why why are there so few uh, members in our church we should think that okay 
I am not doing enough. We should not point to others and say, so and so is not doing their work and so and so. What am I doing? So moving on to the church at Antioch. We see that there is a specific importance given here because this was the place where they were first time called as Christians. Mm -hmm. And they were called Christians because everything, whether their preaching, their teaching, and their conversation, everything was based upon Christ and his life. And it was not just small things here and there. It was just from the beginning till the end. It was talking about all his um, uh, early ministry and how he had to suffer and die and he was persecuted and also he rose again. So all the things were talked. So people would not be just getting just a small little window of mm -hmm. Jesus' life. It was the entire life. Their, 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 their whole life history was based upon Jesus' life. So we see that um, it is very important for us to remember, for us to be called as a Christian. It's a, it's a big responsibility too, because you don't want to um, bring shame or bad reputation to the name of ourselves being called as a Christian. Um, in James chapter 2, uh, no, sorry, in uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16, it says, Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. So no matter what happens, if we are, uh, we are strong in our foundation, we will glorify the Lord. We, we should not be only happy and uh, in a good spirit when we are going through no difficulty, when God blesses us. But even when we go through difficult times, we should be willing yeah. to yeah. glorify God. So moving to the last section here, glorifying God. We are chosen to be God's uh, servants, to tell to others about his love. We have to even think about if we are really reflecting Christ. Are we being uh, helpful to the world or are we being a hindrance? Because yeah. we can be either way. We cannot just say we are playing neutral. I'm not doing the work, but at least I'm not hindering. Yeah. If we are not doing the work, obviously we are hindering the work yeah. because we are yes. not improving on our talents. And uh, there are times where people sometimes give excuses saying that I don't have the talent. Not everyone needs to go and stand on the pulpit to preach. Yeah. Not everyone needs to go travel all around the world to preach. Even within your small circle, whether it be the home circle, your, uh, maybe it might be your relatives, maybe it might be your neighbors, like just one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, when we make the best use of uh, those opportunities, for sure the Holy Spirit will work yeah. together. And yes, we have to be willing at the same time, we really need a lot of prayer and fasting as well. Yes. Because that, um, as it mentions here, it talks about let the ministers and evangelists have more season of earnest prayers with those who are convicted by the truth. Remembering, Remember that Christ is always with you. Mm -hmm. So Christ is with us. We have to make use of the, uh, the, the power that is given to us. And that power is the power of prayer. Yeah. When we, even the weakest of the saint, becomes the strongest one how when he is connected with god yeah because he has the best source of power so let us uh, remember that uh, the time is short and uh, as time goes on we don't delay any anymore as it says here time is rapidly passing and there is much to be done every agency must be set in operation that presents opportunities may be wi may be wisely improved so let us pray that we don't use, waste these uh, opportunities, but make the best use and move on as we study more about, uh, about the life of Apostle Paul as he walked from place to place. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Johnson. We will now move on into the lesson of the day, Growing in Harmony. Brother Levy? Yes, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for being online. Um, at the time of a lesson that will bring up a lot of knowledge from the Word of God. We welcome you and we pray that the Lord will bless you with health and um, will bless you with uh, faith and passion for the souls and passion for, um, for the kingdom of God. 
this is very important for us, uh, brothers and sisters, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Paloma Johnson, uh, we do have a growing harmony. Uh, friends, we have seen um, going through these uh, lessons about life of Apostle Paul, a lot of doors that have been closed, a lot of doors that have been opened. Mm -hmm. And we see a scenario uh, with a lot of uh, upside downs in, in the life of uh, the evangelist, in the life of this uh, disciple of Christ, whose main purpose uh, was salvation of souls. Yes. He did not uh, have a priority of uh, his position or his, uh, the way that people look around him. He did not uh, do any cosmetic behavior regarding his ego, his dignity, his reputation. He, he ignored all those just to fall in place with the Word of God and with the command that the Lord Jesus Christ has uh, given him. Now, uh, after all these um, elements, his conversion, um, then um, uh, his uh, change of view, Use uh, from the theological perspective, introduction of Apostle Paul in the church in Jerusalem, introduction uh, or introducing Apostle Paul in uh, or amongst the group of the disciples. All these steps were were not uh, hastily produced, but have uh, himself faced a lot of uh, antagonistic attitude, reserved behavior. Uh, at the end of the day, he started to go, uh, you know, to be accepted in the Christian community. Now, this lesson, uh, we saw the Jewish nation re rejecting him. In the last lesson, we saw the fact that his life was a threat if he would not take off from Jerusalem immediately. And that brings me to the point of what happens with a church that is left in darkness. Uh, we saw in the history of Protestantism, and I anticipate uh, history have ahead of us, we saw that every church that will go in apostasy will produce, an, uh, will produce a reformation. A group, small group of people from that church will take the stand and um, uh, bring farther the values that this church in apostasy has forsaken or abandoned. So here is the National Judeo Church, a church that have been given or granted the blessing to write the Old Testament in Hebrew. Now this privilege is lost because all the documents that we have in the New Testament are uh, written in the Old Greek, which means that by default, the fact that they didn't have permission as a Hebrews to write the New Testament in, in Hebrew language, they lost the connection and touch with, it, with divinity. Uh, brothers and sisters and friends, uh, today we study growing in harmony. So this is another stage which shows the beauty of the gospel because we are not going to work and have success or succeed in our attempts to saving souls as long as we are not uh, compact, as long as we are not in harmony with the work of, uh, with the word of God and so on and so forth. So uh, what do you think um, uh, if we uh, invite Paloma to, and uh, to read uh, the uh, uh, memory text and the spirit of prophecy text, I think there are brilliant uh, um, declarations that will set the stage for our lesson today. Yes, uh, the memory text is Acts fifteen six, and it says, And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. The note is from the Signs of the Times, August 25, 1887, and it says, the middle wall of partition between the Jew and Gentile was broken down. They were no longer in separate rooms. The unbelieving Gentile has been united with the believing Jew. The Gentile did not crowd the Jews from their original position, but he became a partaker with them of their blessings. Thus was fulfilled the mission of Christ. Beautiful. So it is interesting that now the pretension that the Jewish nation is a special nation, and it was, uh, now that, uh, that spoiling title privilege uh, is put away and God is open a perspective for the evangelism for the entire world, which means that God of Hebrews now is the God of Greeks, of Romans, and all the other nations of the world. Uh, there is a text that comes back to my mind uh, where uh, the prophet of the modern times uh, mentions about what would Jerusalem have become if they would have received the Lord Jesus Christ. And she says, 
I try to be as accurate uh, as possible in, co in this quotation, in, in, in quoting the, the statement. If the people of Israel would have received Jesus Christ, Jerusalem would have become the center of the entire missionary work for the entire world. Jerusalem would have been the, the light of the world with missionaries going all over the places. But what, what a pity that they, they, they rejected Christ and by doing this, they forfeited this privilege from themselves. They separated themselves from God. And from now on, they will become a synagogue of Satan, persecuting, cooperating with the forces that are uh, uh, of authorities like Romans. You know, since when the Jewish will betray the Christians in the hands of Romans. You will see uh, along the pattern in the New Testament, uh, ladies and gentlemen and brothers and sisters, uh, a connection between the Jewish that were betraying systematically any move of Christianity into the hands of Romans. It's, it's very sad to sell or betray your God and now to become a servant of the dark uh, powers. It, it, it's, it's just amazing. Now, when we go a little bit on Sunday, um, uh, sent out uh, on a mission, uh, after uh, the one year of Paul and Barnabas in Antioch, how did the local church acknowledge their calling in an official way? urging them to enter new fields. And we do have definitely the references in Acts 13, 1 to 3. What should this teach us? So what, what is the morale? What is the conclusion of this? If you guys can elaborate, I highly appreciate. They were ordained. Uh -huh. Yeah. There was a blessing in the work that was being done. Mm -hmm. But so far, there was no real kind of public declaration yeah. of their work or organization yes, yes. Well. and we see that uh, the du du uh, du during the years that passed everything was going on very well but at this time it says that so, so neither of them had yet been formally ordained to the gospel ministry and mm -hmm. this is what was done in acts chapter 13 verse mm -hmm. 3 it says that and when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they continued to do the work, but now they were ordained. Yeah. So it's interesting that uh, this ordination is a call to responsibility or officially recognizing their responsibility to the highest level, correct? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's very interesting. So uh, this uh, growing church uh, felt somehow the need of organizing. Uh, uh, itself. So organization was not a purpose or a, a scope uh, in itself, but uh, the only purpose of organizing the church, uh, the Spirit of Prophecy says, is to save more souls. We don't organize ourselves just for the sake of organization, mm -hmm. but the only purpose of organization is to save more souls and yes. to make sure that we are scattered proportionally and we dispatch our forces in, in, in an intelligent way to reach out as many souls as possible. Yeah, beautiful. It's interesting. God had abundantly blessed the labor of Paul and Barabbas uh, during the year they uh, they remained with a, a, a beloved in Antioch, but neither one of them has just formally ordained to the gospel ministry, as you said. So it's amazing. Uh, they they start a new uh, ramp to to take off for preaching of the gospel in the world. And yes, ordination was something very, very important. For those listeners that uh, and those that are watching online, ordination from the perspective of the scripture and in our perspective too, is that uh, Apostle Paul and Barabbas, uh, Barnabas, they will have the right to baptize. Um, they will have the right to give communion service. They will have the right to officiate sacrifice like marriage and so on and so forth, even ordaining other ministers. So you see, they needed to be recognized and or in charge with these, uh, qual uh, with these uh, uh, responsibilities uh, to be capable to deliver or uh, transmit them farther on. Now, when we go on Monday, um, conveying and consulting, uh, um, under uh, question number two, subsection subse two, what could Paul and Barabbas testify about their missionary labor? Uh, so when they have been asked about their personal experience, what did they reply? Acts 14, 27, how are we to seek a, a similar experience today? Zechariah 10, 1. 
what do you think? Uh, each, whatever you feel comfortable well, in with, Acts chapter 14, verse 27, it says, they rehearse all that God had done with them and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. So mm -hmm. they were talking about the, the success they were having mm -hmm. with, the, with the work that they were doing. Because uh, if you remember, the Gentiles were the class of people that were never reached. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. as yes. you mentioned already, it was almost like an exclusive yes. uh, salvation for only the chosen people of uh, God, but which namely is the Jews. In Zechariah chapter 10 verse 1, it says, Ask ye of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain. So the Lord shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. So ask and ye shall receive. So mm -hmm. they were receiving bountifully for all the efforts that they were uh, making. So um, the, the note also brought, brings about where a church should not feel jealous or left out if they are not being visited. But at the same time, we have the... the now they were ordained elders there. So now they had to go and visit different places to start new work and so on. And so is even in today's time Society, that yeah. we have ministers and elders who have to go from place to place. They cannot just be just in one place and just be comfortable there because they have to go and start the work in different places. So the church should be happy to let these brethren go to the different places to start their work. Uh, one question, though, uh, 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 bothers me. Uh, was the initial plan of God, and, and this is a, this is an additional question. It's just uh, on 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 for the sake of uh, opening a, a, a clear understanding uh, on our conversation. Was the plan of God that the Jewish nation to become an intrinsic or inclusive church? Or it was the plan of God that they should serve by example and to be the light of the world. Because if we remember, and, and that's my conviction based on what we see, I've seen in Isaiah chapter 56 and so on and so forth, where the Lord says that even the stranger that will come back to me and will hallow the Sabbath and will keep my commandments, he shall receive a name better than this and that. Even the eunuchs, those that don't have a name and stuff, God will give. So you have in the pages of the Old Testament a lot of uh, proofs that, yeah, yes, uh, while they were a, um, I would say, uh, they will be a, uh, a special nation, yet they should deliver the gospel and the beauty of the truth uh, towards uh, uh, with uh, or share that uh, truth with uh, with the uh, nations around them the problem was that they believed that they have a privileged statute and they did but that made them to act like a spoiled child mm -hmm. the problem was that their exclusivism their behavior uh, led them to, uh, I mean, disconnecting themselves from the Lord, they become bigots, religious bigots. And then under the name of religion, they start to hate people. Hate people that don't believe like them. They are not acting or walking in the way of life like them. So then they justify that hatred that became a pandemic. Because we are talking about these big terms in today's society. So I do really believe that was not the plan of the Lord that they may be so selfish, so introverted, so uh, secluded, so close, so solitary. No, the Lord wanted them to share the gospel and to influence, to change the customs and the habits of the nations around them and to become to the Lord. The problem was that another one beside the bigotism we see in the Old Testament, we see that instead of converting the nations to God, the nations were converting Israel mm -hmm. to their false and pagan concepts, uh, religious concepts. And that's why God had to reform this uh, Judeo-National Church for so many years, for so many decades, so for so many centuries, until they came to the terminus point uh, where they are perceived like divine you know, and where the, the, the fruit is, is sour, you know, is, it doesn't bring the fruit of conversion. So when we talk about the fact that God has opened a new uh, option to the Gentile uh, Gentiles, this is not just an afterthought plan that God came with uh, after the rejection of the Jewish, Jewish nation. Uh, the Lord wanted that all the way along. But uh, unfortunately, he was dealing with stubborn or uh, stiff-necked uh, type of personalities. 
in the Judeo uh, National Church. And even today, you know, if you look to to the to the general traditional concept of that region, it preserves the same flavor, the same soury kind of behavior towards the people that are around the, uh, the, uh, uh, them. So what we have learned as Christians is that God is not subjective, but He's objective. He loves everybody, and He considers uh, the people from the world and the Jewish on equal premises based on the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and uh, when we come uh, to the next point uh, discussing about this, describe the challenge that eventually came to Paul and Barabbas, uh, Barnabas uh, and the uh, response they took. Acts 15, 1, 2, and Galatians 2, 1, 5. What happened there, Paloma? What, how, how can you bring up some noble ideas out of these uh, questions, uh, Bible verses, references, and note in the note? Uh, well, the main conflict that came up when Paul and Barnabas visited was the question of circumcision. Mm -hmm. And basically the ceremonial law, but circumcision was one of the main ones. Mm -hmm. And going back a little bit to what you were saying about how the Jews were acting about uh, like bigotry and how they were exclusivist. exclusivist. I feel like um, one word that could describe that well is gatekeeping, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. they, uh, they didn't, uh, I don't, don't know how to explain it well, but they were basically guarding mm -hmm. their religion. They were uh, making it exclusive. Yeah. And yeah. And try to scare the world with their religion because uh, you, you mm -hmm. don't try to be like us because it's impossible. Yes. I remember a text from uh, just on, on, on a long line. You can't uh, the be line. like us, yeah. basically. Yeah, uh, these are of ages. I'm not quite sure, brothers and sisters and friends that are online. Uh, there is a text in these are of ages that uh, says that the only purpose of the Pharisees in the time of Jesus is to scare the world with their holiness. With their, I mean, don't don't try to be like me because it's not it's not possible. I'm so elevated in in my uh, immaculate uh, concept and stuff like it's scary. Like you can't do it. You have to do it like this, exactly how we do. And but they could not do it. No one else yeah. could do it. So. And that's why uh, they put heavy emphasis on the ceremonial law, and they wanted the Gentiles to follow that. Yeah, because they want, I mean, uh, now when we come back, because you, you brought a point that is very, very, very uh, challenging for, for our conversation. You see, in the previous lessons, we saw that there were groups of proselytes from the Judeo National Church that were pushing for that. So these groups of people uh, legally or officially re uh, rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, rejected Christ as the Son of God, Messiah, etc. But now, when you come up, uh, Paloma, with this concept of uh, uh, circumcision, uh, who is the group that is, uh, uh, is, is pushing for uh, circumcision of the Gentiles? Are the solitary groups outside of Christianity or are forces or minds that are joining tradition of the Judeo National Church and yet are still in relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ or in connection with Christ? So this is from uh, within. From, from within. Uh, so that, that's the problem. You know, you do have uh, in Jerusalem Christians that are our brothers. But they were Jewish first and Christian afterwards. So this is a big, big issue with all cultures of the world. I mean, we come from different corners of the world and we unite our hearts and our minds and uh, our faith in the Word of God. Regardless, uh, we put our culture, our nationality on the second position and we take Christianity as our first citizenship primarily uh, beyond all. So we are Christian first, uh, first and then we are uh, Russian, Chinese, Americans, whatever, um, Asians, uh, French, Italian, so on and so forth. Afterwards, uh, but the problem here is that Peter and others, or maybe uh, uh, other disciples, they were pushing for Jewish tradition. Somehow they loved Jesus Christ. Somehow they were, they were so much in sincerity uh, on, on obeying uh, uh, the pattern that the Lord uh, Jesus Christ has established before of them, before uh, 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 ahead of them. But in the same time, they wanted to make sure that the Jewish label is uh, uh, branded or is the brand that the new uh, pagan uh, Christians will uh, will receive. So in other words is, yes, 
uh, Paul, we are good, we are accepting your work, but you know, in order to filter that if they are honest and sincere Christians, we have to filter and scan them through the ceremonial law. We have to make sure that they understand uh, Judaism to the depths and understand that circumcision is very important for us. Uh, we know very well that circumcision was the symbol of bap baptism in the New Testament. So now, if the Christians from, Gen from the Gentiles were baptized into the name of the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, what do you want more? You know, they, they, were, they were pushing, oh, it, baptism is not enough. We need to have another baptism. After the baptism uh, uh, of confession uh, of the name of Jesus and believing in the Heavenly Father, our, uh, His Son, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and so on and so forth, we want to make sure that they confess the name of the Judeo National Church. And that is our tradition. Jesus Christ did not do away with this tradition, so we have to keep, keep that. So it was a kind of a, a ping-pong conversation amongst them, but really, really triggered some, some, some uh, sensitive chords amongst the Christians, yes? And I think uh, this is something that we talked about a few weeks ago, but it goes back to what we mentioned, how mm -hmm. it goes, it's based on their need to want to do something for salvation, mm -hmm. to have to do something to earn their yeah. salvation. I, I think that circumcision here uh, does uh, uh, more to do uh, with, a, with a national well. identity. You know, our identity. You are, you are Jewish first and Christian afterwards. And in reality, um, uh, Johnson and uh, Paloma and Brethren uh, online, uh, when the Jewish people died, in, uh, in the siege of Roman Empire, you remember Titus Livius, uh, the gates of Jerusalem were open and those that really, really believed in the prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ took advantage and got off that through the open doors. Romans pulled back the army without any justification. Nobody understood why. Even today, the, the generals, the strategists, those that are working professionally in a war strategy, they don't understand why uh, why the, uh, the, the general would draw uh, uh, the, the Roman army. They don't understand why. It was a compelling force of the Lord. And the Christians that were still caught in the city, they took off, they saved their lives. But there were Christians, maybe, I don't know, were the Jewish that were Jewish first and Christian afterwards. And they decided that they are patriots and they have to fight against the Romans and they perished there. So that's a very, very good lesson for us to understand that once we become Christians, we have no enemies and uh, our cultures and our traditions are highly respected, but uh, they are not uh, occupying the first place. Uh, they are occupying a secondary base and we are Christian first because we are sons and daughters of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, going farther, uh, we uh, have the question number C under Monday that says, what did the general meeting of believers consider? And what example does this also uh, provide for us? So even though we uh, recap, basically, as Paloma said, some of the things from the past, uh, repetition is the matter of teaching, or of learning, yes? Yeah. So what, the, what we can understand, so they had a council, they discussed, the big guys, the super hyper theologians in Jerusalem, what happened? They discussed, they had, uh, uh, did, they got together, did they get together instantaneously or did they have some debates, uh, some different approaches? Johnson, what well, do you think? The, what the, happened? As far as I see that it was the best thing that they did, mm -hmm. in the sense that not you do as you, you feel and I do as I feel and they do as they feel but at least they came together to counsel together mm -hmm. and each one brought their their ideas. Again, it mentions about how... And not the, arguing with each other yes. or yelling at each yeah. other. Mm -hmm. It says that uh, certain of the sect of the Pharisees mm -hmm. which believed. Okay, So they were the ones that were Pushing trying to, to make sure that everyone gets circumcised mm -hmm. and they follow the ceremonial law mm -hmm. and they said that and to command them to keep the law of Moses. Moses. Yeah, yeah. That's the most important yeah, thing for them. Yeah, yeah, okay? yeah. And it says, and the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. So at least they came together to discuss uh, so that we can see what the Lord says yeah. and what you understand and what I understand yeah. and how do we see what is good for the progress yeah. of the Lord's work. Yeah. Not just to uh, see that we make a, a kind of burden for someone, yeah. or we try to forget all the old things that we had all we had kept so far. Because 
uh, th these, when we say, okay, the ceremonial law, and it was exclusive, sometimes it's easier for us to even tell that some of them were not needed. But that was an identification to show them they were the chosen people of God. Yes. So uh, they were trying to make sure that that identity is preserved. But yeah. at the same time, you are talking not about Jews that have been there, Jews for generations. Yeah. These are new ones that have just entered into the faith. And yeah. how do you uh, how do you treat them? So yeah. this council was a very good thing that they had. So you have about. the conservative uh, view in the church that is preserving the national identity yet. Yeah. And, and I think that the apostle, uh, the, um, uh, the brethren in Jerusalem, uh, well, you're talking like a comparison, a giant conference in yeah, Jerusalem, yeah, you know. Is. Um, I think that they try to soften down the tone of the newcomers that are always in fire and trying to bring you uh, zeal. But sometimes beside the muscles, we need some brain too, you know. You need to know when to yeah, open your exactly. mouth, when to keep yeah. silent. Yeah, and I think that here is the wisdom of the brother in Jerusalem because they tempered, they, 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 uh, they brought, calmed down, yeah. calmed down the, uh, the attitude of the other brother. And the conclusion was sound. Uh, and uh, led to the salvation of the rest of the people, including those that were in Jerusalem, yes? When we go to Tuesday, assembling the, uh, to unite on God's will. So how did the general council of uh, believers proceed, and what did they conclude? So at the end of the day, they discuss, they pray, uh, they advise with each other. What was the con conclusion? Paloma, what do you think? What, uh, or uh, Johnson, what, what happened there? So they came and they discussed. We have Galatians chapter 2, verse well, 7 this to is 10. Where, this is where we see the expertise of uh, Saul. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he knew that, okay, if you bring it up to the general uh, council, mm -hmm. everyone is going to speak up and mm -hmm. like, yeah, it's, it's going to be very difficult to present even your point. Like, there are times when uh, some of these points are uh, kind of sensitive. Mm -hmm. When I say sensitive, not that it's uh, classified information, yeah. but it is, um, it's very, very touchy. The subject yeah, is so touchy. So absolutely, okay? absolutely. And here when you're talking about should you, should you not, can you, or uh, you cannot kind of thing. And um, it's, it's very easy to, to change the mind. Mm -hmm. okay? Some people may be undecided and depending on what you see or what you say and what others say, mm -hmm. they, they change, they, they make up their mind. And so what we see here that uh, what he did was uh, when he visited, first he wanted to talk to Peter, James and John. They were the leading uh, brethren there. And he knew that if he were to talk to them and not try to convince them, but to reason with them as to why we don't have to burden the, uh, here, the, the new Gentile converts to Christianity to be circumcised. And if they would be more receptive to that idea, it would be easier to present to the general council because the, the, the other members they looked up and they respected very well Peter, James and John. So his goal was to talk to Peter, James and John, convince them or at least to talk to them why it was not necessary. And it says yet with far seeing wisdom, he concluded that if these men could be led to take a right position, everything would be gained. Mm -hmm. So this is where his strategy yeah. sort of worked out. So Apostle Paul was a, a good strateg as well. Yeah. He knew, but it's interesting, brothers and sisters, and it's just amazing how Paul, who was a, 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 an extreme Pharisee, he himself called in the past perfect according to the law. Paul identified himself, I was perfect mm -hmm. according to the law. But when I faced the Lord Jesus Christ, and I realized the magnitude of the Ten Commandments, which is not necessarily the law of Moses. Uh, when sin resurrected, I died. So Paul has a deep understanding of what righteousness by faith is in Christianity in Christ. And, and we don't say that Paul, uh, I mean, uh, John and Peter and James don't have the similar perspective, but they were uh, elements of influence amongst the rest of the people. And Paul addressed him from the theological perspective. I do really believe with all my respect that Paul was the most um, entitled or prepared to understand the doctrines of Christianity due to his school.
correct? And I, I'm not quite sure if you defer uh, or disagree with that, but due to the fact that he learned to the feet of Gamaliel, due to the fact that he had a straight revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ, due to the fact that he understood the concept, the Torah, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, he knew them by heart. I mean, this guy was eating paper. He knew everything. So he was an expert, a brilliant mind. And when he displayed to land, look, this is a trap. If we allow people to get um, uh, to get uh, 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 circumcised and we push them farther to the law of Moses, uh, Christ will be lost. And by doing this, we lose again the Gentiles and we go to back to square one where we uh, crucify Christ. So by explaining these elements to, to Paul, uh, Peter, John, and James, I think that was the wisest thing to approach the most influential people. And then I do believe that the rest fell uh, in place. And praise God for the wisdom that came uh, through Apostle Paul and the other three special guys. Uh, and uh, finally, we have peace. And we also see that uh, 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 Saul was not one of the Christians from, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. before. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, he, he also was a, a new Jew. convert yeah. after he met uh, Jesus. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, they also have a biased view. Okay? Correct. Now, when he says that, oh, we, cannot, we don't have to follow the ceremonial law, automatically they would say, no, we cannot listen to him. He, yeah. he like, uh, mm -hmm. even... His point was not about ceremonial law to obey or not to obey. Yeah. His uh, main goal was to preach to the Gentiles, yes. to make them Christians. Yes. But now they would bring up about, oh, he's trying to throw away everything. Yeah. Now don't yeah. even listen to him. And he's the, a liberal the, apostatized. The, yes. the, the main goal or intention will be forgotten and they would just may uh, see just how to attack him and how to just disprove or discredit whatever yeah. he is presenting. Yeah. And uh, in Acts chapter 15 verses 19 and 20, it's, uh, it brings out quite well what was his proposal mm -hmm. here. He says, Wherefore my sentence is that we trouble not them, which from among the Gentiles are turned to God, but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollutions of idols and from fornications and from things strangled and from blood. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these things are yes. almost cut and dry. Okay, yes, you should yes. not. You should stay away from all these things. But let's not burden them with these uh, circumcision and other things that becomes almost like a yoke. But mm -hmm. again, the central point would be the love of Jesus. That's that's what he was trying to. Yeah. Uh, not to say that do away with everything. They can do anything and everything. Just mm -hmm. talk about the love of Jesus and everything is good. No, he had some restrictions, but at the same time, he said. Yeah, Cut it's, them some slack yeah. too. It's, it's interesting that when, when Apostle Paul proposed this uh, uh, abstain from pollution of idols, number one, fornication, number two, strangle things, number three, and from blood, number four. Uh, in reality, these four commandments were so significant and important because number one, pollution of idols is dealing with identity of whom you worship. Mm -hmm. What type of God are you worship? You don't worship a God that is stone, wood, gold, silver. You worship a God that is so incommensurable that heaven and earth cannot comprehend him. Number two uh, says uh, 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 dealing with uh, fornication. Uh, here is the morality of the law of God, the Ten Commandments, that God is a moral God and God wants that the people that follow him to be moral, to be honest, to understand the, 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 the moral character of the law. And then the, from the uh, strangled things, now you shift towards, um, you shift uh, to a, a, an element that we will call today health reform. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we know very well that dead animals were not healthy to be consumed and so on and so forth. Uh, they, they, they had uh, much to deal uh, uh, with, with, the, with the impact of what they consume and their uh, uh, their health rather with a more uh, uh, with a ceremonial law and then from blood that is specific uh, specifically uh, decided in, uh, in in the Old Testament that blood is life mm -hmm. when you eat meat you should abstain yourself don't eat meat with the blood and that's why you have this promotion of kosher meat 
because as long as uh, the meat is red, that means that has blood in it. So that's why they had a long, long process of um, um, producing the meat to be kosher. They will put the meat in the water, the blood will be released from the streams, then you have to uh, smash the, uh, the, the meat again uh, until it releases uh, and until the, the, uh, the meat will become white instead of red. But what happened is, and it's funny because uh, they, they, the, 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 the Jewish scholars say that after uh, when you, after a long process of getting the, the meat to be kosher, uh, it loses its taste. <laughs> loses its taste. <laughs> it's good for nothing. Yeah. And then they said, wow, is that uh, reasonable? Why do we work so much, like a week, to produce white uh, uh, flesh with no red uh, cells? And when by the time we eat it, it has no, like, uh, like a plastic paper or something, you know? <laughs> so by doing this, kosher meat was a lesson from the Lord to teach the Hebrew vegetarianism and back to eat in Genesis 1, 29. So it looks like this concept of returning or bringing back the Gentiles to Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 and 30, back to Eden, to the principles of original principle of creations were in place. And what's sufficient for them at that very moment, yeah? So, yeah, what response was then uh, sent back to Antioch uh, in Acts 15, 22, 31? Poor people, they were waiting. They were waiting to see what they will decide. Are, they, are, are, are we going to be received fellowship in the church? Or they will push us through a labyrinth of labyrinth of uh, 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 rituals and all these things. And what happened, Paloma? Uh, what uh, what was uh, what happened with what was their reaction um, uh, when re, uh, 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 when response was it's under B when response was uh, then uh, sent back to Antioch. It's Acts chapter 15, 22, and 31. It's a long reading, but if you can elaborate in a few ideas or if you feel comfortable, Brother Johnson, whatever you feel. Well, one of the things was what you just mentioned, to mm -hmm. abstain from idols, blood, things strangled, and fornication. Mm -hmm. And they didn't really put emphasis on the circumcision thing, mm -hmm. but they mm -hmm. didn't say that you couldn't do it either just to not put that pressure on the on the gentiles mm -hmm. I, at least that's what i understood so so uh, johnson when they came back with these four principles or establishments of the new christian era uh did they receive that did they accept that were okay uh, they didn't bring back circumcision yeah well we see that uh, um, as we mentioned already, uh, already uh, about coming mm -hmm. to a council yeah. uh, was a good thing for them to uh, to meet, meet together and to kind of uh, Discuss, present each yeah. other's uh, point of view. And after uh, Peter, James, and John um, had the first glimpse of okay, what was the main intention of uh, Paul from uh, making this proposal, mm -hmm. and it was easier for them to go and present to the rest of the general council yes. and talk to them. And these these three were really highly looked upon by the others and it was sort of easier for them to uh, agree to what Peter, James and John presented versus what Paul presented. And it also mentions here that um, uh, having themselves been one to the true position brought to the matter before the council and one from all a concurrence in the decision to leave the Gentiles free from the obligations of the ceremonial mm -hmm. law. Mm -hmm. And this is the final decision that yeah. Yeah, yeah. came out as a result of their discussion there. In, in, in other words, uh, I, I think that this opened the door for Paul to work more freely, yes? Because otherwise, if you would have carried, if they would have carried the decision uh, on the opposite side, uh, uh, it uh, tied will tie the hands of Paul to work uh, to, because the, uh, the Gentiles did have prejudices against the, the, the Jewish. Uh, some prejudices were based on subjective uh, reasoning, but uh, there were some objective reason, uh, sus, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, preconceived ideas on the side of the Gentiles due to the behavior of the uh, the Jewish people and the way that they related or the dynamics of their relationship. They they regard the Jews as very selfish people or whatever, or they just want to only them to be saved and the Gentiles, the pagans, to be anathema. Like, uh, you have no rights to, to survive, you have no rights to exist, God will save us and you will die, perish like an animal. I don't think that that, uh, that kind of behavior uh, collects a, a lot of friends around you, correct? Mm. Yeah. And I think uh, one of those things, like, okay, we are talking about the uh, early church. Yeah. In in the current situation, we have other things as well. We talk about that 
sometimes we have to sit back and think is it a matter of salvation okay yeah uh, we we may try to pinpoint at every little thing mm -hmm. and again well all of us are either running a race or we are growing step by step mm -hmm. not even here okay just the three of us we are not on the same level yeah. of our christian growth yeah. each of us are at yeah. a different level yeah and we cannot expect one who is very experienced yeah and one who is just newly baptized soul to be on the same level yeah. and uh, trying to force something when it is not a matter of salvation mm -hmm. it should not become a hurdle it yeah. should not be a hindrance yes, yes, so uh, at that time it was the matter of circumcision and uh, point, yeah. uh, obeying the uh, ceremonial law today we have dress reform it's important but sometimes you have to go by teaching mm -hmm. we may say oh i'm bringing it up straight and uh, straightforward but it's very easy to drive people away mm -hmm. versus when you study and when you explain to them why, why not, how and how not to do it, when they understand, they will change by themselves. We don't yeah. have to say yeah. you have to do it this way or not do the other way around. Yeah, yeah. Well, when we go to Wednesday, uh, time is running and uh, we have to come to a certain uh, uh, conclusion. Wednesday, uh, a learning curve. What happened when Peter coming from Jerusalem, where he had to deal with the Jews and their prejudices, visited Antioch, Galatians 2, 11, 13. So what phenomena is there? If you remember, there was a very interesting uh, moment. What, what happened? What happened when Peter came uh, coming from Jerusalem? Well, he seemed receptive at first. Uh, he was sitting down with the Gentiles and interacting with them. Uh, but then afterwards, Jews from Jerusalem come ah. over and join them. And then it seems like he switches, like he switches character and he starts to avoid the Gentiles. And it's kind of interesting because it reminds you of the time where he denied Christ, mm -hmm. where he pretended to not know him. And we kind of see Peter go back into his uh, like old self for a little bit here. Yeah, yeah, so it's interesting. So did you, did you, the, the, the problem is, so here is Peter, usually the Hebrews will not eat at the same table with mm -hmm. the Gentiles. So they had a big, uh, probably they had a, um, a, 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 how should I say, uh, a time when they had a lunch together and all the visitors and everything. And, and Gentiles proved themselves pretty hospitable, you know, pretty hospitable and, uh, uh, they enjoy to have, especially receiving such uh, high esteem leaders from Jerusalem. So they put them to stay with the brethren that were in the, amongst the Gentiles leaders. And Peter was overwhelmed with their love and respect. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, the commando come from Jerusalem. You know, a group uh, of uh, brethren uh, leaders from Jerusalem that they have this articulated behavior with no mixture with the Gentiles. And Paul, Peter, uh, for a second, uh, transformed the entire faith and his religion in politicizing something, you know? And he took off immediately uh, for the sake of not losing the reputation or the trust or the credit of the brother, and shifted and uh, took, probably set uh, by his brothers uh, at another table. Well. I don't believe that the Gentiles didn't notice that. Didn't they they, they, they felt and offended. In terms, uh, you would say that Peter was kind of trying to be politically correct. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And uh, definitely that, that brought an offense upon Gentiles and Apostle Paul realized because he was sharp uh, mm -hmm. and keen to notice things like this. And uh, for a leader of this uh, magnitude like Apostle Peter, you cannot, uh, I mean, you, you see, uh, when you reach such a, a certain level in society, there are certain mistakes that are not acceptable, not tolerated, not yeah. tolerated you know. So this is a, a, a breaking of a protocol, a violation of decency or diplomatic affairs, if you wish, uh, on, on the Christians that were over the border of, uh, of Israel. So now, obviously, we go to B, question B, how did Paul rectify the situation? He did not what, what? let it slide. Oh, mama. Yeah, this was really powerful. I mean, Apostle Paul really had the courage to, to address Paul. What was the statement? But I think uh, also uh, courage is one thing, but this one actually helped to rectify the yes. error that was yes, made. Yes, yes, yes. Because if, like, if you just uh, 
kind of thinking a little bit if he would have just brought up this matter to Peter and others. Like he actually, it even mentioned that Barnabas yeah. also yeah. Uh, withdrew himself. And um, again, sometimes it's uh, to tell that okay, someone, uh, some people are uh, more concerned, and some some should be more yeah. uh, okay. Okay, like Barnabas, he was the one that actually uh, introduced. Paul to yeah. the rest of the brethren. Yeah. yeah. So how did he change in this uh, point? But if he would have tried to go and uh, explain to Peter and others later out uh, in secret, okay? Yeah. No one else would have known. Yeah. And even if they would have tried to rectify the it, damage they would, would have been made. That. The damage but would have been made. Now that it's been openly rebuked, yeah. okay, it says here. But when I saw that uh, Galatians chapter two verse fourteen says, but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. Wow. I said unto Peter before them all, okay, mm -hmm. if thou being a Jew, livest after the manners of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compelest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, in see, uh, the, the, these kind of situation and also the things we will see ex experience later on are where his education and mm -hmm. the way he was taught yeah. comes out, okay? Yes. He doesn't beat around the bush. Yeah. When he Go sees something that's point. wrong, he speaks. And again, he knows what he's speaking and he stands for the right. Yeah. And it says it, Paul, who saw the subverting influence of the wrong done to the church through the double part acted by Peter, openly rebuked him for thus disguising his true sentiments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So yeah. Peter was not a nobody. Yeah, he was a very important man. Absolutely, absolutely. And when he does this mistake, the Gentiles are shocked. Yeah, okay? not the Gentiles yeah. actually. The, but the they, new they find in that behavior a stumbling block. Yes. Yeah. And it, you cannot tolerate certain things. Yeah. But when the rebuke is made, at least they know. Okay, they do recognize the mistake. So yeah, it, yeah. it was a good yeah. thing on yeah. Paul's yeah. part. But 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 this statement in this and the verse is pretty pretty heavy for me at least to digest. <laughs> but when I saw that they walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, wow. <laughs> this is a mega statement. I mean, Paul, uh, Apostle Paul is talking about whom? He's not talking about Levi and Johnson and Paloma. He talks about mm -hmm. Peter. Mm -hmm. You know, Peter and the other uh, brethren. I mean, uh, people that have received the Holy Spirit, you know, and they were blessed. Uh, Peter, who says, gold and silver I have not, but what I have, I give, I share with you. In the name of Jesus, please take your bed and walk. I mean, they did miracles. They resurrected people. They, I mean, you can see that the Holy Spirit is working with them. And yet, in a twinkling of eye, without uh, um, noticing, they disconnect themselves from the Lord and they become humans again. And, and then Apostle Paul says, look, they don't walk, uh, they uh, walk not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. And it's amazing that he has the courage to address the matter to the point to save the situation for the sake of Christ, not for the sake of their friendship. Well, I'm friend with Paul. I'm friend with Peter. Wow. Now it's Peter. How can I go to rebuke Peter? You know, he's my best friend. So he rather preferred to lose a friendship and uh, to lose a relationship with this giant of faith, which is Apostle Peter, rather to lose relationship with Christ. So he thought that it was his personal uh, obligation and mission to fix that in the name of the Lord Jesus. And he did it. He did it by God's grace. And actually, the, the reason it had to be done was it also came to a point where there would have been a division of the church. Absolutely. Okay, so that was not a simple mm -hmm. matter. Okay, right now it's, that's the fledgling church and it's not so big. Actually, they were having lots of uh, um, uh, success. But to have a division there just because of the, the, uh, the action or attitude, it would be a bad thing for the progress of God's work. Yeah, so Peter, Peter believed what Apostle Paul did. Peter believed that the Gentiles are equal with, with the Jewish, but in the same time, he was afraid to share that sentiment and he tried to hide it from the Jews to preserve their friendship. I, I will call this a spiritual hypocrisy, yes? Mm -hmm. Because it is, and, and Apostle Paul says he was caught in the chain of hypocrisy. Yeah, yeah that's the, the statement. Anyway, on Thursday, um, uh, uh, section 5, 
a lesson for all. What should we learn from the way Peter accepted Paul's rebuke and why the correction was done publicly? Psalm 141, 5, Proverbs 25, 5. So uh, we have basically two questions in one. Uh, what should we learn from the way Peter accepted Paul's rebuke? So obviously in this part of the question, Paloma, we do have already half of the answer mm -hmm. that Peter accepted the rebuke, correct? And he was an old man. I, now, I don't know exactly. I think, I still believe, think, uh, uh, I do believe that Peter was older than, uh, than Paul. What do you think? What is your, I never did a research yeah, per se, yeah. but it's, uh, or he, they were pretty close to the, to the age. But in the church, he was much older or senior because yes, he, he has yes, been there yes, since yes, Jesus yes, Christ. He yes, was a disciple. Yes, yes, yeah. definitely, definitely. So if you can elaborate in Psalm uh, 141 verse 5. Uh, in Proverbs 27, Paloma, what do you think? What is there? Uh, well, basically what it was saying is that it's better to openly rebuke someone than to do nothing. And I think what the verse said was love them in secret or something mm -hmm, like mm -hmm. that. And I think it's really important to acknowledge because um, it's something that a lot of people are hesitant to do, that I'm sometimes hesitant to do because we don't, like you said, we don't want to uh, put that friendship at risk. Mm -hmm. We don't want people to, like whoever we're rebuking, we don't want them to see us in a mm -hmm. bad light or to get mad at us or anything. But at the end of the day, it's better than to leave them in ignorance or to not say anything and then yeah. continue to let them yeah. go down that path. Uh, I think uh, if you go by the statement of Psalm 141 verse 5, uh, I think it's, you do a service to someone. It, uh, the, the psalm says, let the righteous smite me. It shall be kindness, and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head. For ye, my pr uh, yet my prayer shall um, also shall be in their cal uh, calamities. So I, I do believe that a true friend will tell you things to help you, not to let you fall. Correct. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's pretty, praise the Lord. And, and, and uh, open rebuke is better than a circuit love. You know, that uh, was your bench to the point. And, uh, Johnson, any, any yes. uh, uh, footnote, uh, any comment on we that? We see, okay, time and again, okay, even in the, uh, du during the time of Jesus, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, Peter was a really strong willed man, okay. Yes. Uh, he, he, he went up to the point where he would say, like, maybe others, but not me. Okay, mm -hmm. because he knew himself. Uh, yeah. When I say he knew himself, reading about mm -hmm. Peter, we know for sure that he would have turned firm. Yeah. Okay, yeah. because yeah. we know his character. Yeah. But really, when the test Comes. came, he could not. Okay, he yeah. denied. And even after Jesus uh, did warn him ahead yeah. of time. Yeah. And again, uh, if at this time. Uh, this instant, uh, this incident should not have happened. It would not have happened. Yeah. But why it happened and why is it even written in uh, in, in the in the scripture? It mentions uh, here in uh, in Acts of the Apostles that uh, this was supposed to be like a lesson, mm -hmm. even for for uh, Peter because he was in such a high position and high responsibility that sometimes we think that oh they are infallible, they cannot make mistakes. But he made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, written so that we can uh, identify and recognize that no one is infallible. Yeah. The only time we can be really sure is only if we have a firm connection. And also, God knows the beginning from the end and the end from the beginning. Yeah. So it says that Peter saw the error into which he had fallen and immediately set about repairing the evil that had been wrought so far as was in his power. So as much as he could, he did make amends there okay and it says uh, here god who knows the end from the beginning permitted peter to reveal this weakness of character in order that the tried apostle might see that there was nothing in himself whereof he might boast mm -hmm. so there was nothing in himself yeah even the best of men if left to themselves will err in judgment and also it continues to say that there were some people there who would have even uh, try to uh, bring up some uh, exalted prerogatives mm -hmm. that was only reserved for God. So he was so high and so holy than all the others that 
you respect him almost like God. Mm. And that's what was supposed to be prevented, it says here. And God also saw that in time to come, some would be so deluded as to claim for Peter his pretended successors and his pretended successors, the exalted prerogatives that belong to God alone. And this record of the apostle's weakness was to remain as a proof of his fallibility and of the fact that he stood in no way above the level of the other apostles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So even today, we cannot say, oh, he's a minister and that's a newly baptized soul. But if you make a mistake, it's a mistake. Yeah. So only if we are connected with the Holy Spirit, uh, with, a, with a, uh, scriptures to God, we cannot be faltering. Yeah. If not, we will easily fall and even a little child will come and point yeah. to us saying, hey, you're, <laughs> you're doing wrong. Yeah, okay? yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very, very much, uh, Johnson and Sister Paloma. Uh, the final thought of our lesson is the greater the responsibility placed upon a human agent and the larger his opportunities to dictate and control, the more harm is sure to do if he does not carefully follow the way of the Lord and labor in harmony with the decisions arrived at by the general body of believers and united council. Apostle Paul, uh, Apostles, uh, Acts of Apostles, uh, page 198. So the title of our lesson was Growing in Harmony. Now we have the end of the lesson, Walking in Harmony, Fixing Problems Together in Harmony, Repenting uh, in Harmony. You know, it, it, it is a lot of school here that we have exposed to, and uh, we praise the Lord for uh, for giving us this lesson. So uh, brothers and sisters, friends, uh, those of you that are online watching what i personally have learned and concluded in this at the end of this lesson is that uh, we humans do not have one single minute or second in this world when we can rely on ourselves saying well i am above every possibility to be tempted and to sin again as long as we are still alive as long as we are on this earth we cannot ne we can never let the guard down mm -hmm. we always should be in in prayer we sh should be in a personal examination before the high standard that is jesus christ and we should never nourish or feed our ego or for our inner pride uh, with the idea that we are a superman above others creating a special class an elite class in religious uh, uh, arena where makes us uh, to have uh, special treatments and special privileges. Such things does not exist. And if you find religion, uh, religious, uh, religions or uh, beliefs where people do have a special treatment in Christianity, you must know that something is wrong with that religion. We are all equal and we all are uh, deprived of the greatness of the glory of God because we are buried and covered in sin. The only chance of survival as Christians, uh, lay members or leaders, uh, factors of responsibility is to hide ourselves in the Lord Jesus Christ and to recognize Jesus uh, per se as the only reason of trust, of merits, of salvation. And that's why the entire glory should be given to our Heavenly Father for the gesture He has done to convey his son to us for salvation of humanity. Uh, brothers and sisters, friends and visitors, we really, really thank you so very much for being here with us, studying with us. We don't pretend that we cover all the 360 degrees elements, but we try the best. Uh, and we recognize our limitations and uh, 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 failabilities, in a sense, which is a proof that we can never become a pope or whatever rank of superiority. We are simple, humble uh, people, and we are humbled by our limitations and our, our imperfections or shortcomings, you know. But at the same time, we thank you very, very much for being here with us. And before we say uh, uh, a prayer, I would like to remind you that we do have in few minutes the divine service stay with us for for the 11 o'clock service i'm sure that every message that is delivered from this pulpit at 11 o'clock in roanoke church it's it's uh, very very good and will touch the hearts will feed feed the souls and will fill the void of those that don't know christ yet
Let us bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much for giving us a chance to be together with you, Lord, today. And we thank you very much for sharing with us the beautiful circumstances of the gospel, the way that apostles have cooperated together, the way that they have fixed problems, the way that they uh, saved the reputation of Christ and the rep reputation of the truth amongst the Gentiles, the way that the old apostle Peter uh, have acknowledged his mistake in an age where he could have been proud of his own achievements. We thank you for giving us the example of Apostle Peter that every time when we are rebuked or someone calls the attention of our shortcomings or certain mistakes or errors, we should receive that rebuke uh, towards the, our salvation and for the recovery of the relationship between us and others. In the name of Jesus, we thank you so very much, especially for the friends and brothers and sisters, visitors, listeners that are online, maybe first time. And we ask you that you may bless them, may comfort them, may encourage them, and those that are discouraged, confused, those that are across intersections and they don't know where to go, what road to, to catch. Lord, give them the serenity of the presence of the Holy Spirit that may whisper to their conscience and to our conscience what to do next. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 We want to thank you for joining us today as we study the Gospel according to Paul Galatians. Join us again next week as we study the lesson entitled, Living Entirely by Grace. God bless. <laughs>